You may have heard that DDR4 and your computers have transfer rates of well over 20 gigabytes a second. But did you know that the L1 cache in your CPUs have transfer rates of up to 200 gigabytes a second? Wait a minute. What even is cache? What does it do? And why do you need it? Welcome to Haris Hobbies. CPU cache is a type of cache that the computer processor uses to access data and programs much more quickly than through the main RAM. Since the cache is embedded directly onto the processor or very close to it, it is much more faster than RAM. Generally, CPU cache is very small and does not exceed a handful of megabytes, and as a result, it only stores the most frequently used data and programs. All it does is make copies of the most frequently used RAM locations. To further improve transfer rates, CPU cache is generally made up of SRAM as opposed to DRAM which mostly makes up RAM kits. If you want an in-depth explanation of the two, then make sure to check out my dedicated video on RAM. But as a quick overview, DRAM or Dynamic Random Access Memory is a RAM that needs to be consistently refreshed for it to store data. However, DRAM is able to store one bit of data per every transistor. SRAM on the other hand does not need to be consistently refreshed. However, SRAM requires several transistors just to store one bit of data. Consequently, SRAM is much faster but also much more expensive due to the extra size. Due to the extra cost, it is only used in small amounts in places like CPU cache. Now, when you buy your CPU, you may remember reading on a spec sheet about the processor having L1, L2, and L3 cache. All of this is, is memory that operates at different speeds and have different capacities. L1 is the fast memory, but generally it also has the smallest capacity, so it only stores the most frequently used data. The next most frequently used data is stored in L2 cache, which is a bit slower, but generally also a lot bigger capacity. And same thing goes for L3 and even L4 cache if your CPU has it. Finally, once all these memories are exhausted, the information is then stored onto the main RAM. Multi-core chips typically have varying amounts of each of these types of CPU cache. For example, it is preferred for each core to have its own L1 cache in order to reduce latency. As a result, a common octa-core processor may have an L1 cache for each core, an intermediate L2 cache for each pair of cores, and then just one L3 cache for the whole processor. Right now, L4 cache is pretty uncommon, but you can find on some of Intel CPUs with onboard ED RAM. At this point in time, the benefits of L4 cache simply don't outweigh the extra cost associated with it. Nowadays, most CPUs have at least three different types of cache, which are instruction cache, data cache, and TLB or translational locusite buffer cache. Instruction cache is used to speed up executable instruction fetch, while data cache is used to speed up data fetch and data store. Data cache is typically what is organized into multiple levels of hierarchy, which are L1, L2, and L3 cache. Finally, TLB cache is used to speed up virtual to physical address translation for both executable instructions and data. So hopefully, by now you understand what CPU cache is, what it does, and why you need it. On top of this, you should know about the three main levels of cache and what the three different types of cache accomplish. So next time you're shopping for a CPU, hopefully you will have a better understanding of what the spec sheet is talking about. So, did I miss something important about CPU cache? And what computer concept or hardware concept would you like me to cover next? Make sure to comment down below. Also, if you guys like this video, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing if you would like to see more videos just like this one. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.